All right, quick seatbelt update. We're learning here. I just got off the phone with Steve from Seatbelt Planet, super useful guy, taught me a lot about how seatbelts function and that my idea doesn't work. It's the short version. Um, there's two different kinds of retractors, it turns out. There's the older style, which are ALR, which are used for lap belts. Those basically let you feed out a belt, but then once it you stop feeding it, it then kind of locks and doesn't let you feed out anymore. Um, those only work as lap belts. And then there's ELR. Um, I don't know what the other one stands for, but that one's emergency locking retractor. That's what you find in a modern car where you can pull as much belt as you want, but it like jerk it quickly or if it senses um, sudden deceleration, it locks. That only functions for a shoulder belt and it only functions in a situation where the belt is coming down over you because it has to feel that like jerk for I don't know the exact physics of it but basically he said it only works that way so that kind of retractor either needs to be mounted on the floor come up through a loop and down over you or needs to be mounted above and behind you and come over it can't be mounted on the floor and come up this way or be mounted over here and come across and then uh, there's no those are the two ways it functions turns out having two separate tongues going into the same place is that there's for some reason he can't legally sell me that i don't know the details not important but there's a specific sort of tongue that has a stud on it that takes a separate click on tongue um, i'm going to show a picture of that right here that style um, is what he can legally sell me because it has two separate, the, you can't accidentally put one, the wrong one into the wrong thing and stuff like that. I don't know, again, don't know the details, but that's what it is. Um, the way that can function is one of two ways. Either I can have a lap belt with that tongue on it, and then I have a shoulder belt that is loose with an adjuster on it. That's like the old style, um, Chevelle ones I was talking about in the, the old style Chevy hardtop ones I was talking about in the other video. Um, they sell a kit for a Ranchero, I'm going to put that here, that basically does that. And what I would have in that case was I would have a belt that functions like you would expect a lap belt to. That would be, again, clicked into the, the little clips up here like I talked about in the previous video. You'd bring it down, you'd hook it on, and then you would have to manually adjust it. Um, the other style is one designed for a Corvette that he can make me a version of. I'm going to put a picture of that here. This has two different retractors. You have the older style ALR one that comes across your lap that has the tongue with the stud on it for your lap. And then you have a second of the ELR, the other style retractor, that in a Corvette is mounted to the package shelf behind you and comes across your shoulder and hooks onto that. He said it's also fine if that's mounted up here. It doesn't care about orientation, except that it has to be, the belt has to be directly feeding out of it. So I can still mount that up here. I could probably, I'm gonna double check with him, but I think I can mount it like upside down or whatever. He just says, all it cares about is that it's a straight shot. So that can get mounted up here. Um, I don't know how much space I have behind this headliner, so I might be able to hide most or all of it behind the headliner, but I have to find that out. I'm gonna have to cut a big hole here. That sucks, but life is what it is. Um, this has the advantage of both belts being, you know, like, I, with the manual style, which is much cheaper, that's going to be a little over 200 bucks for a set of two, um, once you get that belt adjusted, you can't lean forward effectively. So, like, reaching the radio and the glove box and stuff like that is difficult. The other one, it has the advantage that you have that ability to lean forward to reach anything and that it locks in an accident, but that's $800 or close to that for that style. So there's a huge price differential. Again, that's for two belts, but that's, that is what it is. I have to decide whether I'm willing to spend that hugely large amount of money and have to hide a retractor up here. I think the big, one of the factors is going to be how much space I have to hide a retractor up here. If there isn't any room and it's going to be like hanging down, that's going to be such a problem that it's not going to be worth the extra money. If I can mostly hide it back here, I mean, it's never going to be perfect, but if I can mostly hide it back here so that it's not terrible and it'll function properly then that opens up options so that's kind of where we are my original idea garbage a brilliant idea somebody else came up with 
of a single belt with a sliding tongue on it that could click in here and then click in here. He says total no-go because you have the wrong kind of retractor. An ALR won't work for a lap, uh, shoulder belt and an ELR won't work mounted on the floor. He says he legally cannot sell me that belt because it will not function properly. So that's kind of where we are. I've now got to figure this out, then I'm going to place an order, but there we go. Um, so we're still working forward on this, but and we're figuring stuff out. Next step is probably going to be to cut a hold of my headliner and then go forward from there. Thanks very much. Talk to you later. Bye.